ang Best Public Affairs Program. And the star goes to Open for Business Net 25. It is a signal to the world that we are open for business. We are now open for business. This is Cesar Vallejos bringing you yet another episode to guide you in discovering your passion and growing your business as we learn from experts in the field. Sama-sama tayong matuto sa isa na namang makabuluhang usapan tungo sa pagpapaunlad ng inyong negosyo. Ang Open for Business ay mapapanood nyo rin sa Facebook, sa YouTube, Siguraduhin mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media pages at Net25 TV. Alamin natin, suriin mula sa mga negosyante, thought leaders at mga personalidad sa iba't ibang larangan ang mga strategies, trends at mahalagang karanasan sa pagninegosyo dahil tayo ay open for business. There are businesses that are built from the ground up and some that are grown through succession from hardworking parents. In this narrative of legacy and continuity, a son endeavors to preserve the core values instilled by his parents. Join us here at Open for Business as we delve into the story of Steve James Mago, CEO of DNS Transport Group, the enterprising young leader whose passion for business and steadfast dedication to his family legacy undoubtedly helped to bring their business to new heights. Inspire sa mga senior. Sana all. <laughs> Monday first screening! Yay! Nakaka-relate kami. <laughs> Naparami po naming life lessons na natutuhan. As part of the Gen Z ng mga students ngayon, napaka eye-opener po ng story nila uh, nila Lids and ni Bob. Kaya napaka laking tulong po nito sa mga makapanonood. Sobrang ganda po talaga. Like, Driving the decades-old family business is one of his top priorities, taking the helm of DNS Transport Group as its CEO and getting his hands involved in other multiple businesses of the family, Steve James Mago shares with us the values of growing their enterprise as well as preserving the legacy and values of his family. Welcome to Open for Business. How are you, Steve? I'm very good, CRV. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, but you are very <laughs> elusive. Siguro mga ilang ilang buwan at taon din yata kami <laughs> nag-set ng uh, interview na ito. Oo nga, nako. Uh, alam mo naman, matagal na rin akong gustong mag-guesting sa show mo. And I'm very happy na finally I'm here in your show. Mm. One interesting thing about you, Steve, is that you are definitely, aside from being elusive, you are also a private person. We had a lot of researchers mm -hmm. checking on your uh, social media, but so far uh, we've seen that you and your family, you're very humble and um, so far we see that you are also a very private person. Is it because you are really uh, concerned on your family business that you don't have time, you know, with show business? Of course, <laughs> but we see you, we see Steve from time to time in Kada Umaga yeah. because oh. of uh, Miss Pia Guanyo Mago. 
Well, as being private, I could say yes. Nakikita nyo naman ako when uh, may support pag mga, may mga show si Pia, may mga hosting job si Pia, especially sa Net25 concerts. So, I'm there. So, hindi lang ako siguro madalas yung nakikita sa TV because really, I'm not a showbiz personality. Uh, si yung asawa ko lang yung showbiz personality. But I'm uh, very private because really, siguro ganun na din yung kinalakihan ko ng pamilya ko na we really focus on our ano lang, private lives, our private uh, endeavors. And then before naman I met Pia, uh, hindi, wala naman ako sa showbiz, ano, no? uh, <laughs> sa showbiz circle. circle. Oh. Naging part na lang ako ng showbiz circle because of my wife. And I'm very happy to be part of it kasi ang dami kong nakilalang mga personalities and then I became friends with them. So I'm very grateful about it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I know as that as a CEO or as an entrepreneur, you somehow would shy away from the limelight. How is it adjusting also to a life with uh, a showbiz personality? I'm sure you have adjusted as well. Somehow yeah. uh, you have to marry that own personal business privacy uh, that you have to marry it with the showbiz life of your wife. Well, uh, na-accept ko na rin yan. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi hindi naman sa walang choice. But I also ano na rin, embraced the situation of having a celebrity wife. And then also, I enjoy na rin ako kasi alam mo naman, mm. si Pia, celebrity, so whenever I uh, go out with her, talagang dinudumog siya ng tao, nagpapapicture, yung mga tao. Eh, ang maganda naman doon, nasasama naman ako sa picture. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, so in-embrace ko na rin at the same time, yung nagkaroon siya ng mga sa sarili niyang social media accounts and then YouTube account. So, hindi naman embrace but I also support her. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I am part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we know a lot of things about Pia but we have uh, limited uh, information about <laughs> you and your business. But, the reason why we really um, invited you here in Open for Business is to know more about your mm -hmm. journey of entrepreneurship. During my introduction, I mentioned uh, of your legacy and business continuity and the family enterprise that you have. Ano ano ang mga negosyo ito? I am sure uh, a lot of the small businesses mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of those who are watching, um, especially the young entrepreneurs, uh, I'm sure they would want to know ano naman yung mga sikreto natin na meron ka. So, maybe let's start with the businesses that yeah. you operate now. Yeah, so my father actually started a shuttle bus uh, company noong uh, 1994. Mm -hmm. So, he used to be in the semicon industry for how many years and then he decided when he was 40 years old, magre-retire na ako early retirement, and then I will Bata start my own. At, four, no? 40. At, four, at 40, yeah. Pero sinabi niya, magkukontinue yung career ko, pero in a different career path. Ah, okay. Hindi na siya nasa corporate, so naging entrepreneur na siya. And then, that was 1994. Ano pa ako nun? Uh, me and my brother was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, fast forward, uh, that was the NS shuttle mm -hmm. services. So we were catering to uh, mga Peza zones, mm -hmm. and then we were servicing their mga manufacturing plants in the Peza zones and transporting mga employees of these manufacturing plants. And then move forward to 2004, I graduated na from college, and then after college, I went to the U.S. tried to see what uh, my opportunities there. But after less than a year, sabi ko parang uwi na lang ako ng Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back home. I told na my father that uh, I would like to help him and join the company. And then in 2004, I helped start a new rent-a-car business. So that was uh, Delta Rent-a-Car. Uh, we started Delta Rent-a-Car in 2004. And then I started with just a couple of fleet, mga CRV, mga Civics and Honda Accords, mga apat na units. And then biglang nadagdagan ng another six, naging ten units. So I was managing that. And then, yung mga customers ko nun, puro mga corporate. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I was doing B2B businesses. Mm-hmm. Yung renta car ko hindi siya yung may tumatawag mm-hmm. na hindi kilala tapos mag-rent hindi. So we are doing B2B businesses. So these are institutions the talaga, companies, yeah, companies like, talaga. And maybe uh, you know the passengers would be expats, it yes, could be uh, employees. That's why I saw that ano, that niche kasi my father has this shuttle customers na mayroong mga f- foreign expats mm-hmm. and then they were needing mga vehicles nila and drivers uh-huh. so nakita ko yung opportunity nakita ko yung niche na yun. so i took advantage and gave that services to my father's mga customers as well sa mm-hmm. semicon and mm-hmm. other manufacturing industries pero during that time ba steve are there a lot of players during that time because you said you found a niche so yeah. how do you decide on that finding of a niche where in you will say ito wala pa to well nag-umpisa yan no? yung opportunity really i saw na yung mga customers ng father ko was already asking for mga chauffeured ano uh, services oh. eh wala oh. naman siya noon kasi puro bus yung meron siya oh. so nabanggit niya sa akin and then i i saw the opportunity because during that time ang mga car rental services are really mga ano lang eh, nasa hotels, mm-hmm. airport taxis, hotel yes. taxis. Wala siyang naka-tailored fit for the manufacturing expats na that will cater to them. Mm-hmm. So and these are individuals yun. with, you know, high-ranking yes, uh, positions. Yes, mga CEOs, oh, vice yes. presidents, directors, and mostly mga foreigners, expats. So nga. instead of them parang buying their own cars, which is more expensive for the company, yes. it's a lot cheaper if mm-hmm. there is a service that's provided for Correct. them. Correct. And also, I took advantage because these companies, they don't want to buy their assets. Just like if they have expats, they don't, they all, they rent their houses, Ah. They rent their cars because the companies don't want to have assets here in the Philippines. Ah. The, all they want is to rent or either to rent or to lease. Which is mm. cheaper for them in the long run. Yes, and then mm. it will be an overhead only. Because imagine mo if they need like 10 vehicles. O, di ba? O, that's already at mga during that time, mga expedition yung mga mm-hmm. requirements sila. Do. So, mm-hmm. that's around 4 to 5 million pesos. Mm-hmm. So, at 10 vehicles, you already need a capital of 50 million pesos. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, they saw that opportunity and I saw that opportunity na don't use your capital, pay me monthly in the in, in depending on the we can do it for three years or five years so you can pay me monthly instead of them shelling out 50 million right away they'll be mm-hmm. shelling out like a million pesos monthly na lang mm-hmm. so they instead of them using their capital to another uh, services they can use that capital for their own business that's right that's right pero that's a huge investment for you as well because syempre they are choosy in terms of their <laughs> of the type of the car or vehicle yeah. that they'll be using yeah. sabi mo nga expedition so it depends now on that specific market you serve that market mm-hmm. and if they like expeditions or even you know higher yeah. models yeah. you have to provide that, that's that right. to them that's right so one good thing about our uh, business we establish ourselves with our Uh, with our banking partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, we started uh, with our own money, my father, and then initially, uh, my father had banking partners that mm-hmm. supported and helped the business. And then eventually, around 2004, uh, yun, uh, nilapitan ko rin tong mga banko na to. And uh, I'm grateful to them na they trusted me mm-hmm. during that time because uh, they gave me capital to support the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of those who are also privileged, mm. diba, they wanted to go abroad, yeah. they wanted to go to the U.S. Yeah. Because, you know, sabi nga nila, you know, there's greener pastures yeah. there, diba? Yeah. You know, mas gusto nila di yung nandun yeah. sila. At pagbalik dito sa, sa Pilipinas, sometimes they can create their own empire as well. Pero That's ikaw right. parang pitin, parang one year lang. Yeah. Ano yung nag-trigger sa'yo para bumalik na dito? Well, ang nag-trigger sa akin nun, yung nakita ko, I was actually about to continue my studies there. But, yung nung nag-campus tour na ako, parang sabi ko, naku, it's, ano, it's in the suburbs of, of New York eh. Oh. So sabi ko, I realized, this is not for me. So sabi ko parang I'm a city person. <laughs> so sabi ko hindi ko ata kaya dito for another 4 or 5 years. So I decided sige Exactly I, what what place? What suburb? In ano in uh, upstate New York. Going back to your story. 
So, siyempre, andyan na, pinagkatiwalaan ka ng bangko. Eh, sabi mo nun, uh, four cars, hmm. uh, six, hmm. ilan na yung fleet ninyo ngayon? Ngayon, under, for, between the four transport companies, uh, it's, ano na, just under a thousand of, ano na, yung fleet namin, entire fleet. So, ang dami nun, ang dami nun. <laughs> yung, sa, um, yung mga ibang uh, yes. negosyante, isa lang, masaya na. <laughs> da, da, isa lang, masaya na. Dahil we know that with the business, with the logistics now, yes. di ba? Especially during the pandemic, talagang yes. ang, ang nakinabang din talaga ay uh, logistics yes, or transport right. business. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning that you have uh, a group of uh, subsidiaries or the, uh, this brands uh, under transport. What's the difference between the transpo, the, this shuttle service, yeah. with the rent a car? How can you differentiate well, these groups? Well, the DNA shuttle, the product of DNA shuttle is uh, shuttle, bus shuttle services. Si Delta rent a car, the product niya is car rental services. But from 2004, and then meron pa kami isa pang MRZ Transpo. Mm -hmm. We started MRZ Transpo at 2008 to cater our customers in Laguna. Kasi mm -hmm. ang DNA Shuttle, mostly our, the, their customers is in Cavite. Mm -hmm. And then 2009, we started DNS Clark, which mm -hmm. is catering to clients in mm -hmm. Pampanga. So we do shuttle services and tourist bus uh, services in Central Luzon. So, the three companies, DNS Shuttle, MRZ Transpo, and DNS Clark are all shuttle services, mm -hmm. bus shuttle services. Now, ang ano namin, flagship before was DNS Shuttle. Mm -hmm. But now, the flagship company now is Delta New Solutions. Because? Be why Delta New Solutions? Delta New Solutions is before was Delta Renta Car Corporation. I changed the name noong 2014 so that I cannot, I can't be tagged as a rent-a-car only. Oh, I Oo, see. Because during that time, uh, nung 2004, moving forward, nung I was doing rental services, I was also asked by some companies to handle their fleet management. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, full operating lease. What is fleet management? Fleet management is uh, a company that has their own fleet, but mm -hmm. they want to manage it by a third party. Mm -hmm. Kasi nandiyan yung dispatching, nandiyan yung drivers, mm -hmm. nandiyan you handle your maintenance, registration, and insurance. So for them, medyo, it's not in their line of business. So they find a third party, which is me, and then I manage that, and then they pay me a certain fee. So mas mura ulit yun kapag they have their own people handling the entire system yes. or managing the Managing, fleet. yes. Kung, kung baga, we are the experts. Mm -hmm. I am the expert. So for like, for example, for Net25, you are an expert of producing shows. You're not an expert of managing vehicles, a mm -hmm. number of fleets. So oh, that's we can why rent. Not, we can rent. <laughs> <laughs> we can buy. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's one product that Delta New Solutions has. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is full operating lease. So, for example, a company calls me and they need a hundred fleet of cars. Mm -hmm. So, I can produce, I can uh, buy that cars and then they, they can lease it from me. So, lease it for minimum of three years, maximum of five years or even seven years. And then I handle the, the machine, the registration, the maintenance and the insurance. So, they pay me monthly. Mm -hmm. So, mabalik ako dun sa example ko kanina, like for capital. Nowadays, there's companies that they manage hundreds to five hundreds units in their fleet. Wow. So, instead of them having a capital of 500 million mm -hmm. and using it to an, to, to an overhead expense uh -huh. for them. So, they save that capital and then I use my capital to buy these units and they rent it or lease it from me. So, yung 500 million na shell out nila, magiging 5 million na lang yun monthly oh, spread out. Yes. Mm. So, they can use their capital to other businesses or to their core business. Exactly. So, and which gives them more savings. That's right. Yun. Okay. Wow. That's very interesting. But <laughs> what is intriguing also, na pwede na ganun pala yun. So, even if you're in one sector of the business, you should have to position also one business unit that caters to a specific market yes. or a specific need. That's right. How did you study that market? Well, by talking to my customers, 
mm-hmm. and also for them for me that I realize na yun nga na I can take that opportunity of managing their vehicles without them having the headache of doing all the administrative work. Mm-hmm. So nakita ko yung opportunity na yun and took advantage instead of them uh, getting the headache, pass on the headache mm-hmm. to me and uh, and pay me na lang that ano, that mm-hmm. certain amount to 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 service uh, and manage your fleet. And that throughout the years, 2004, 2010, ano lang yan, baby steps lang. Uh, I started with uh, yung 10 units. And can you imagine, during my rental car days, I also drove for my customers. Really? So very hands-on yun? <laughs> Oo, oh, oh, kasi especially pag uh-huh. meron akong mga requirement na wala nang akong unit, all, na, all are utilized. Uh-huh. And then tatawag sa akin yung dispatcher, Sir Steve, wala na kami ng ano masusuport dito. Ako na yung magde-drive noon pati uh-huh. kotse ko pa. Uh-huh. Your customer knows that you are the owner. No. Hindi ka nagpapakilala. Hindi ako nagpapakilala. That's a great learning, ha? Kasi yeah. syempre parang just for you to make sure that you deliver and then you yes. provide service yes. instead of saying no, you do it yourself. Yes. Pero madalas bang ganoon noon? Oo, kasi during the time I was just a startup eh. Ilan ah, lang kami. So, ilan lang yung drivers ko. Siyempre, pag may mga nag-day off or biglang sudden di, hindi pumasok yung driver. So, uh-huh. yung dispatcher ko na yung nag-drive. Kung wala yung dispatcher, ako na yung papasok. So, ano eh, during the time talaga, I was really committed to, ano, to, uh, to succeed in the business. Pero, mm. Steve, it's good that we are, are learning this and this is something that an example of uh, you or people, who, especially those who are running family businesses. Ano yung mga experiences mo? Like say, okay, you were driving it yourself. Parang was that also an opportunity for you to get customer feedback? Parang ganyan. So, kasi yung iba, if you're the boss or if you're the owner, uh, if there are complaints, you see it on the uh, surface level yeah. but once you are inside the operations you know you know this uh, small things that somehow you know you can find solutions to these challenges ano yung insight mo na kapag ikaw na yung nandun sa operations mm-hmm. ikaw na mismo nagda-drive doon ba technique mo rin yun na nalaman mo na eventually you can yeah. you know when there are relevant complaints you address them Oo, kasi sometimes uh, as a rent as a chauffeur driver no being professional unang-una you have to be professional hindi ka basta-basta pwede makapagkwentuhan doon sa pasahero mo but when your passenger starts talking to you yan so pasagot sagot ka and eventually some riders are very quiet mm-hmm. hindi talaga nakapagkwentuhan some are very you know ma- makwento and then pag nagkwento sila sabihin na nila yung mga na experiences nila sa mm-hmm. services ng uh, rent-a-car na, na, ano nila. And then, ma- sometimes they also say kung ano yung mga complaints nila. So, naririnig ko, pero not directly na to, to know what's, uh, ano yung, mm-hmm. anong class yung service. Kasi, syempre, yun nga, mabalik ako doon. As a drive professional chauffeur driver, you don't want to irritate your yeah. your uh-huh. passenger. Na uh-huh. Sometimes, alam naman mga Pinoy, sometimes, uh-huh. m- ano na eh, nag, nagkwento na ng, <laughs> buhay, ng buhay nila. Kung <laughs> <laughs> parang oh. somehow, they, you have to maintain that privacy yes, for your customer. Correct. Then. Tas meron din akong ibang driver, wise din dahil hindi masyadong magaling mag-English bumibili ng jaryo binibigay yung jaryo dun sa passenger <laughs> para magbasat na lang yung passenger but Steve to- mm. talking about competition yeah. um, siyempre from uh, less than a thousand or, or, or a thousand mm. fleet I'm sure mahigpit din yung competition dyan what is the factor of your success bakit ikaw yung pinagtitiwalaan ng mga korporasyon at mga businesses, lalo na B2B ka. Yes. Bakit kayo yung pinipili na well, mag-service sa kanila? Well, unang-una yung vision mission namin. No? So, vision namin, our mission is always to have a safe driver, mm-hmm. a comfortable uh, vehicle, and always on time. So, because of that, Unang-una, safety because nasa transportation industry ka. Mm-hmm. So, unang-una yung safety ng passenger mo ang iniingatan mm-hmm. natin. Priority Hindi yan. lang passenger, pati yung driver because syempre may family sila na uuwian at the same time hanap buhay nila yan. Eh. Mm-hmm. Yung comfortable na mm-hmm. dapat comfortable yung, yung, yung vehicle kasi 
ano nila yan eh, uh, hanap buhay nila. So, dapat gandahan nila, malinis lagi yung vehicles nila, mm -hmm. uh, palaging uh, in tip-top condition, maganda yung uh, preventive maintenance system ng mga vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's three important things na we really ano, implement and also we take care of our people. Kasi mm -hmm. alam mo naman, managing hundreds of employees, mm -hmm. drivers, mechanics, mm -hmm. it's a challenge. Uh, marami rin din dyang magagaling na you'll be impressed na ang galing talaga nila and meron din dyan yung talagang mga mahirap i-manage. And then throughout the years, uh, I've strengthened my HR department mm -hmm. kasi we, I always believe talagang palaging merong training for mm -hmm. customer service yeah. and safety uh -oh. because number one, safety kahit pa ulit-ulit yung mga natututunan naririnig nila sa mga seminars it's still important uh -huh. to be reminded of, of yung mga huwag ka masyadong tututok uh -huh. for example, kasi yan yung mga basic na accidents na na-encounter natin dito sa Manila, mm -hmm. sa city and then second, yung customer relations mm -hmm. yung sinabi ko sa'yo na may mga customers na madaldal, makwento, some are, they just want to be, you know, very uh, by themselves, mm -hmm. not talking. Uh, little things like opening the door, mm -hmm. pagpapayungan mo sila pag umuulan, lumabas ng kotse. Mm -hmm. So, lo those little things na mga customer services that we want to implement and we want to continue to, ano, para ano siya, standardized. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, based on our research, um, Steve, may mga pumapasok na rin na, ano, na mga kalaban, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, mm -mm. kundi galing sa ibang bansa. That's right. Na pondo pa ng ibang yes. bansa. O, of course, we encourage that because we want foreign right. investments here. But somehow, you know, that would give you um, tougher competition. It's uh, more stiff now. How ready is the group, is your group, uh, to really make sure that you still have the competitive advantage. Well, uh, no, around 2014, no, when the uh, 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 hail uh, riding apps yes. uh, entered our country, that's when I pivoted my rental business. So I really mm. focused na lang talaga sa contracted services mm -mm. because all of my vehicles are contracted because of the hail before. Meron akong mga customers na, uh, ano lang, uh, they'll just call me and then if they need the, the car. But because of them, sinabi ko na hindi na ako mag-rental service. Mm -hmm. I'll just continue to strengthen the fleet management operating lease segment of my business. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I changed the name from Delta Renta Car to Delta New Solutions. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung nakita ko na sabi ko, okay, sila, uh, they can pursue that market and I will not compete because I know I cannot compete. Mm -hmm. And then, I saw that opportunity to grow because in the Philippines, that uh, operating lease, full operating lease and fleet management wasn't a big industry mm -hmm. here in our country back then. So, mm -hmm. I took advantage and I, see the, I, I saw the market. There is a market of uh, full operating lease and uh, fleet management. That's why I took advantage of that and really uh, pursued it. Mm -hmm. And then, come 2017, I saw the opportunity and then, with the help of the government, I started the P2P service. Mm -hmm. So that was under Delta New Solutions. So, yung P2P is point to point, like say from uh, from uh, UPTC in okay. Katipunan to uh -oh. to uh, to Glorieta. Oh, so yun non stop na yun, di ba? So point yeah. to point talaga. Point to point. Ah, na. I see. Your uh, customer there is the government. No. Uh, no, uh, the government gives me the franchise ah, of the operating. the franchise of yeah. operating. And then my ridership, different kasi. The P2P ridership is different from the city bus ridership. Uh -oh. The city bus uh, ridership are yung ano, common Filipino commuters. Uh -oh. The P2P market is really ano, uh, targeted to professional commuters, uh, to students. Mostly ganyan yung ano. So you'll be surprised. Uh, yung terminal namin sa UPTC, mm -mm. sometimes mga bodyguard pa yung sumasakay. <laughs> Guma, hinahatid sa terminal, bababa, tapos sasakay sa P2P. Tapos, kasi papasok sila sa eh, Makati Business District. Uh, so, pati yung sasakyan na nun, magkaiba din? 
Oh, oh ma- ma- ang, mas higher ang, mas end. Mas ha- high end ang yung... mga P2P buses. Uh-huh. Yun yung mga uh, uh, low floor na longer yung mga buses. And uh-huh. then, ano siya, Euro 4, Euro 5. And merong specific specs ang government that uh, to operate the P2P mm. operations. And that started when? 20- 2018. So that is one of the key learnings here, um, Steve. Because kailangan mabantayan mo yung takbo ng merkado para madali kang magpivot. That's the operating word there. You yes. have to pivot. You have. To, you cannot just sit back and relax and watch. Correct. Diba? You have to do something. So yun ba ay as a CEO, as as an entrepreneur, ano yung dapat mong laging malaman yung lagi mong pakiramdaman hmm. well uh, during that time no so the government actually it was not my own ano eh. it wasn't my own project it was the government's project and then one of my good friend told me about it because siya yung unang uh, nalapitan ng government mm-hmm. to help out with the P2P And then, sabi ko, sige, nak- pinag-usapan namin nak- uh, during the time. Kasi yung P2P is just like shuttling what I'm doing eh, in the shuttle industry. Kasi point to point lang mm-hmm. yun. Eh, like mm-hmm. from a pickup point to the plant. Mm-hmm. And balik. So nakita ko, uy, parang ginagawa ko na rin yun. Ah. Mm-hmm. So, tsaka nakita ko rin yung opportunity back then to help na rin yung mga Filipino commuters. Mm-hmm. Kasi the Filipino commuters... Uh, with the P2P, uh, merong mga magaganda ng terminal. Uh, magaganda na yung mga stops nila. Mm-hmm. So, yun yung isa kong uh, gusto sanang contribution sa Filipino commuters na mapaganda yung mga terminals na sinasakyan nila. Tama. Mapaganda yung mga sinasakyan nilang mm-hmm. mga bus. Mm-hmm. Mapaganda yung organized yung, ano, yung pagpipila, pagsakay ng bus. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, nakita ko yung opportunity kasi yun nga, nasa transportation ako and I'd like to also help the mm. Filipino commuters na to have a faster, safer, comfortable buses in the city. Mm-hmm. Well, we've been together in I think Japan, Dubai, yeah. you know, when we look at the cities, they ba parang their transport system is very efficient. So okay yes. lang kahit wala kang sasakyan. What do you think the priorities of uh, both the private sector and the government sector yeah. To improve our transport system. I tell you, the government is putting in a very good job pagdating sa transportation natin dito sa Manila and also sa mga in, in terms of pro- provincial buses and city buses. They're uh, really putting a lot of effort, effort mm-hmm. in uh, sustaining and even growing yung uh, transportation, yung public transportation natin sa city with the help of the LTFRB, DOTR. Because of them, like the P2P, uh, for how many uh, administration during that time, nakita nila na, oo nga, no? dapat naman meron tayong buses for young businessmen na nakasuit, mm-hmm. na pwede naman sila sumakay sa bus. Mm-hmm. So we saw that opportunity, and then we got excited, and then... Uh, we saw the growth, kasi ang bilis ng growth eh. From 2017 until 2019, our ridership, imagine mo, from we started ng uh, Feb of 2018, the ridership was just around 200, 300 passengers a day. Two? How many uh, now? Now, uh, for my for my route in UPTC to Ayala, daily, meron kami 2,000 ridership. Wow. When you segmentize the market, paano yun? Okay, nakita niyo opportunity, pero how do you now, you know, create that awareness na, okay, if you want this shuttle, yeah. go here. If uh, you're just a regular commuter, you can take this. Paanong pag-aaral ang ginawa niyo doon? So, tinignan muna namin yung population. Talagang, we send people to see how many commuters, mm-hmm. and then yung ilan yung population, halimbawa, for example, sa Quezon City, ilan mm-hmm. ba yung mga subdivisions, villages na nandiyan ah. that, that bring their own vehicles. Mm-hmm. Kasi one uh, reason why the P2P was, ano, sta- we started is also to lessen traffic 
Mm-hmm. Kasi how can you lessen traffic if there's lots of vehicles in the road? Mm-hmm. So, syempre, P2P, uh-huh. ang maximum capacity niyan, 50. And knowing yung mga P2P riders are the professional who rides, uh-huh. and who have... some of them have their own cars. cars. Most of them must have uh-huh. their own cars. And they drive themselves to work every uh-huh. day. So, paano ba natin, sabi, paano ba natin mababawasan ng ano, traffic? Alam mo yun, in our own little way. Mm-hmm. So, sabi namin, oh, this is ano, P2P na rin yan. Because mm-hmm. sa 50 na tao, so, 50 vehicles din ang nawala sa kalsada. Mm-hmm. So, nakatulong ka pa. Sa, yes. Hindi lang sa Pilipino, sa commuter, kundi sa gobyerno. Sa gobyerno, mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. correct. So, yun yung mga studies na mga tinignan mm-hmm. namin. At the same time, how did we grow the market? Siyempre, from 200 lang na, ano, na passengers, we really took a lot of effort in marketing ourselves uh, uh, sa mga social media, mm-hmm. yan, Facebook, Instagram, and then we had mga billboards para people will know and you may have services. to go directly to the companies themselves diba yes Kasi yes parang to maybe with their hr ganyan na oh, there's available actually baliktad yung mga hr nila yung lumapit sa amin ah, and called us can ah, we ah. can we ano ba have one bus at a certain morning ah. up your uh, time para empleyado namin yung mga sasakay papunta ah, sa Glorieta ah. ganun mm-hmm. wow interesting mm. pero Meron pa kayong pawn shop. And you also have El Hardin Desida. And I saw that resort. It's a beautiful resort. And yeah. I encourage everyone to go there. It's like uh, you're in Bali or, or in a paradise, you know, when you go there. And you have franchise of uh, food businesses. Yes. How did you develop or how did you go into these businesses? Well, f- yung SMJ muna. No? Well, SMJ was really a, a dream business of my mother. So, since the 1980s, when my parents got married, and then they already were talking about it, my mother enrolled herself to mga, mga jewelry mm-hmm. classes and how to sell. And then eventually, 2000, moving forward, na, they started na the pawn shop. So, mm-hmm. SMJ pawn shop, sa ano pa yun? Sa Imus Cavite namin sinimulan. Ngayon, at this this time, uh, there's about 250 branches. Dami. Oh, 250 branches, mostly in uh, Cavite and Batangas and some parts of Southern Metro Manila. What about El Jardin? I saw the place and uh, so far it was one of the most memorable uh, moments we had with my family. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Was that really... Parang, Yun ba, bahay bakasyonan nyo lang o talagang ginawa na pang business din yun na parang, oh, oh. marami dito sa San Juan, Batangas, magtayo tayo dito. Was that it? Or was it did, or it was really built for something else? No, uh, it was an accident actually. Actually, yung El Hardin It was an accident? Accident na oh, really? business. Why? Okay. It was a house uh, na for the family. Okay. And then my mother kasi and my father throughout the years bought properties uh, since 1980s. They invested there na kasi abong San Juan Batangas, my mother's hometown. Mm-hmm. Doon siya lumaki. Eventually throughout the years, bumili sila ng property pa unti-unti hanggang lumaki, hanggang dumami. And then uh, around 2010, we built a house there mm-hmm. for the family for our, ano lang, for our So, one use. structure lang yun. One structure lang yun, <laughs> yes. And then, eventually, uh, Alin doon? Yung, yung nasa gitna yung nasa ng malaki. Gitna. Yung, yung, mayroong, ano tawag yung malaking bahay kubo. Oh, ah, yung bahay kubo. Yes, oh, oh. Oh, yun yung, ano, yung, uh, yun yung first structure. And then, my mom and my dad said, parang, gusto natin mag, ano, ah, mag mm. events place. Uh-huh. Diba? So, they started an events place for weddings, for mga events, and then after that event space, pag may wedding, parang wala namang natutuluyan yung mga, <laughs> mga, ano, mga uh, nag- groom and bride. Uh, uh, o, sige, so nag-uwian pa. O, nag-uwian pa. Or mag-rent ng ibang uh, resort uh-huh. near the area. So sabi nila, o, pagawa tayo ng uh, villas. So pagawa sila ng villas and swimming pool. So eventually, uh, ano eh, parang nanganak na nanganak to become uh, a resort yung El Hardin de Zayda. So, what is El Hardin de Zayda? Yun yung sabi nilang, the garden of Zayda. Mm-hmm. And Zayda is? My mother. Your mom. 
Wow, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I have met your dad, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mago, at the ne first Net 25 yes. Golf Cup. Yes. You know, he was there, he was very humble, and he was speaking Ilocano as well because yes. he came from Baguio. Baguio. Grew up in Baguio, yes. Grew up in Baguio. I was born in Baguio. And what do you think is the greatest lesson that you learned from him in running a business? Oh, una una is really commitment and perseverance and hard work. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung mga natutunan ko sa father ko na hindi naman pwedeng ibigay sa'yo lahat. You really have to work hard to get what your goals are. So, uh, at an early age pa lang, me and my brother was taught na you really have to work hard. Hindi kami spoon-fed eh. mm -hmm. uh, So, we learned the, uh, the value of persevering and having a plan and having a goal. Wow, it's, it's easy to say, but uh, <laughs> Steve, I'm sure you, yeah. you know, there's a lot to it, you know, and yeah. but so far, as uh, sabi nga nila, yung iba, di ba, COO, child of the owner, mm -hmm. yung iba, parang ang dali nun. but in your case, uh, also as uh, an entrepreneur, as C, uh, CEO, how is it uh, being your journey as uh, from COO, child of the owner, yeah. to a CEO, you know, someone who really yeah. runs the business on your own terms? Well, you know, my, our business is a family-owned business, no? but really, we really established professional, professionality between amongst uh, the family because we have, uh, I have cousins who's part of the business. Mm -hmm. I also have friends who's part of the business. And I have mga employees that, you know, uh, we hired. Na we don't have any, mm -hmm. no, rela no, no relations. So, uh, because of my father's, ano na rin, uh, culture from a, a corporate uh, background, he really imposed na being a professional, even if it's a family-run company. Mm -hmm. So, yes, right now, uh, we're a, prof a family business, but also we run it as, a, as much as we can as a professional company. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung ano namin. So, uh, may mga advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Aside oh, some, some disadvantages. <laughs> mga disadvantages, so... Uh, you feel like sometimes you're the sun, di ba? Pero, <laughs> pero dapat uh, you get some, some mga, mga advantages. Pero uh -huh. I didn't get mga advantages to, to, be, to, to get this position. Kasi talaga mm -hmm. my father really uh, decides kung if you earn it, okay, you can have it. Mm -hmm. But if not, hindi. Sometimes yung, yung in-expect mo na dapat, dapat mm -hmm. bigay mo na sa akin tong position na to, di ba? Ganyan. Uh -huh. Pero syempre... Kailangan patunayan mo that you deserve mm -hmm. to be in this position or to be part of this organization. Wow, you know, very interesting. Mm. Okay, you know, for this last question, what message would you give to children of business owners on how they can carry on the legacy and help in their family enterprise? Well, you really have to persevere. Mm -hmm. uh, sabi ko nga na I'm all, uh, this is my 19th year going my 20th year uh, next year so I didn't quit mm -hmm. kasi that's the good thing I'm very grateful then uh, that I didn't quit this business even if there's lots of challenges because uh, there was there were times na sa, I was already contemplating should I continue with this business or not because of the challenges financial challenges uh, people challenges managerial challenges so there's also a lot of sacrifices mm -hmm. that is involved but uh, you know nowadays especially uh, the younger generation there's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. no that they might say uh, or companies that they may enter to and then they decide na oh it's not for me mm -hmm. because of some challenges or any any reasons and then they move to another uh, company so for me uh, perseverance is important because mm -hmm. sometimes you know being an expert now I can say I'm an expert in this industry because of the <laughs> 20 oh, years that's also one advantage of being in a company for a long time mm -hmm. being in an industry in the same industry for a long time because you become an expert in doing your craft Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there are other passions, yun, hindi ko pala natanong. Mm -hmm. Sige, business pinag-uusapan natin, but what is it that 
you like in terms of interest? Do you paraglide? Yeah. Do you race? Where do you get your inspiration? Well, now I, my inspiration really is my family, uh, my wife Pia and my two girls Scarlett and Brooklyn. So uh, they're my inspiration and you know, uh, I never thought that when I started this business that I'll have a family that to support to. At that time, really, it's just uh, supporting myself, supporting my family, supporting my business. But now, uh, I'm, you know, through time, you get matured and your priorities and uh, inspirations changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, inspiration, sabi ko sa uh, I'm also an athlete. Mm -hmm. So what that's you my You're, that's my ano mga in what field I used to play a lot of basketball during mm -hmm. my younger days and then now I tried the triathlon so wow. I love the ride cycling, I love cycling, cycling swimming yeah, swimming and, and running. running yeah and so I love cycling I have How often do you do that uh, before I do cycling almost every day and mm -hmm. sometimes every weekend we'll do 100 kilometers to 150 kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. So that will be my ano, my weekends during the time. And now into golf, that's my ano, mga hobbies that I do mm -hmm. right now. Also give advice to mm -hmm. uh, business owners, small business, especially um, small businesses who would want to stay long in their business and survive especially lalo na nung pandemic di ba? parang mm -hmm. that they had to continue doing yeah. what they do so my advice is uh, really uh, you really have to do, love what you are doing kailangan nyo mahanap kung anong saan kayo passionate kung anong passion ninyo and also to have discipline and uh, perseverance because you know uh, uh, businesses is uh, very hard to do but uh, there will be challenges that will come. But uh, if you have uh, that, uh, uh, that strength and courage to face those, uh, you will be successful in business. And uh, kami, during the pandemic, uh, we were also grateful to have uh, people that really are uh, loyal and, uh, and believe in, our, in the management to, to move forward during these challenges. And, I believe the Mandena, it's not about the management as well. It's also uh, our me mechanics, our drivers, our staff that, that helps us to be successful. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, this episode of Open for Business, uh, Mr. Steve Mago did not show that he is just the husband of Pia Guanyo Mago, but he is the Steve James Mago, the CEO of DNS Transport Group and uh, uh, one of the owners of many more businesses. And this has been a very insightful conversation and we learned a lot. I myself, you know, uh, was able to discover uh, more about you, Steve, mm. uh, the elusive Steve Mago, <laughs> and uh, uh, this is uh, worth uh, the wait. Uh, a lot of your insights and your experience and your expertise have really inspired us here and open for business, and I hope that you again will uh, visit us in some other days to share more of your experiences for our uh, viewers both uh, the enterprise and small businesses. Thank you so much, Steve James Mago. Open for Business will be back. Stay with us.
welcome back to Open for Business. Here are the trending business news around the world. Government eyes extension of lower tariff on major agricultural commodities. The government is considering to extend lower tariffs on major agricultural commodities to help curb inflation and reach target levels as scheduled, said Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno. The tariff extension, if approved, will only cover meat, rice, corn and coal to keep prices affordable. Through Executive Order 10, fresh, chilled or frozen swine meat, corn, rice and coal were put in the most favored nation rates for 2023 due to inflation surge last year. EO10, however, is set to expire at the end of this year. EU countries show growth and inflation eases in the second quarter. The Eurozone is back in positive territory, with GDP growth at 0.3%, according to reports. France and Spain saw sustained expansion with stronger exports and tourism, while Germany suffered zero growth. Inflation also fell with prices contracting 5.3% versus 5.5% in June. Manufacturing was at its slowest pace since the pandemic due to weaker global demand. The Philippines gets a B credit rating from R&I. Japan-based Rating and Investment Information Inc., or R&I, issued an investment-grade credit rating of BBB+, and revised the outlook to positive, according to its statement. This affirms that the country is on track to reach A-level rating by 2028, according to Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno. The ratings agency said that the Philippine economy has been performing well, despite global economic uncertainties. It also noted that the fiscal deficit is improving at a moderate pace, and the debt ratio is expected to start declining this year. And that's our news roundup. I am Randy Bernardino for Open for Business. Open for Business is at the helm. China's export figures drop. Is China losing the trust of more international partners? Or is it simply feeling the effects of global economic factors? Noong buwan ng Hulyo na itala ng China ang pinakamalaking pagbaba ng bilang ng in-export nitong produkto. Nasa 14.5% ang ibinaba ng benta ng Chinese products sa foreign markets year on year at siya ikatlong sunod na buwan ng paghina sa pandaigdigang merkado. Nauna nang naitala ng Chinese Customs Authority ang 17.2% na pagbaba noong Enero hanggang Pebrero 2020 o sa pagsisimula ng pagkalat ng coronavirus doon. Naitala ang pinakamalaking pagbaba sa exports ng China sa Estados Unidos na sinundan ng mga bansa sa ASEAN at Europa. Ayon sa mga eksperto, ang paghina ay dahil sa nagbabadyang resesyon sa Amerika at Europa na sinabayan pa ng mataas na inflation. Being the second largest economy in the world, China is expected to implement measures that will somehow prevent it from being stagnant. Right now, the country is facing problems with youth unemployment and the housing sector. Researchers are saying it will be difficult for China to compete with the US and other economies because of its aging population. A policy that has long been implemented caused a lopsided ratio between elderly and the youth. How will China turn things around? Kaya ba nitong manatili bilang isang higante sa pandaigdigang ekonomiya? Can China stay dominantly open for business? Pinaril na yung claim nila sa 9-9. Yung kanang kamay, pinakamayan ang Pilipinas, pero yung kalimang kamay, eh, sinasaksak naman tayo. 
tayo naghahanap ng basa gulo pero nagpaprotesta kami. Ngayon, tayo yung iniipit tapos sinasabi nila, nangako tayo. Baka magulat na lang tayo, baka may ilabas po ang uh, China na may meron resibo. silang resibo pala. Sama-sama nating harapin ang mga isyu at problema ng bayan. Dito lang sa ASPN, lunas hanggang biyernes, 8am to 10am sa Net25. Sa buhay, minsan lang dumating ang taong masasabi mong tunay na kaibigan. Yep! At kapag siya'y natagpuan na, huwag mo nang pakawalan! Ang tunay na kaibigan! Laging nandyan kahit kailan! Handang gawin ang lahat! Maging happy ka lang! Gagawin ang Afro Song! Para sa'yo, para sa pamilya, at para sa bayan! Tulad na lang ng inyong mga bagong kaibigan, tuwing umaga, love! Business is back and the biz word of the week is fleet management. It is a broad term that encompasses the many actions and processes that must occur in order for a fleet of five or more vehicles to run on time within budget and at maximum efficiency. Witnessing how his family worked hard, Steve has developed a profound understanding of the business nuances and the values that had shaped the company's success. Now that he's also walking into his father's footsteps, Steve brings a unique blend of time-honored wisdom and fresh perspectives to the table. Armed with a dynamic vision, a future where the family business continues to thrive while staying attuned to the pulse of modern mobility solutions is in the horizon. And with that, our quote is, There is no royal road to anything. One thing at a time, all things in succession. That which grows fast withers as rapidly. That which grows slowly endures. That's from J.G. Holland, an American novelist. Thank you very much, Steve. Maraming salamat sa isa na namang oras na pagsama ninyo sa amin upang tunghayan ng isang makabuluhang usapan ukot sa negosyo dito lang sa Open for Business. Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, samahan nyo kaming muli dito sa Open for Business. Catch us too on Facebook, on YouTube, like and subscribe on our social media page at Net25 TV. We will bring you more insights from industry experts, thought leaders, CEOs, and featured SMEs. Together, let us help encourage business development in the Philippines, sharpen your business acumen, fill the pulse, and set the trend for as long as you are informed and open for business. Ito po si Cesar Vallejos. Marami pong salamat.